So macOS Sonoma has officially been released and a lot of people have no idea what that means because see the thing with Apple is when you update to the latest version of their OS, they actually don't barrage you with 50 distinct notifications. Unlike some of their competitors, this is for the most part a very good thing. It's a subtle experience. The only downside is that people often end up missing out on some really cool features that might be very practical and helpful for their day-to-day -day use, which is exactly why go ahead and update to the latest version of macOS if you haven't already, because I'm gonna talk about some of the most awesome and nifty features, and of course, how to activate or use them. Let's get into it. It all starts with the lock screen. First, you'll notice your avatar and passcode field is now located at the very bottom. You're like, whoa, but then you're like, oh my goodness, the lock screen is alive. Literally, you now have live wallpapers, and it looks absolutely stunning. It's all in 4K, totally gorgeous. Now, once you enter your passcode, if you have the right settings enabled, you'll notice that the live wallpaper slowly transitions into a high quality static image on your desktop. Looks very nice in typical Apple fashion. To access this, simply go to your system settings. From there, go to the screensaver tab. From there, you'll notice you have a library of different wallpapers to choose from. Anything that has a play button on the right corner is in fact a live wallpaper. Once you download it, just select it and you're all good. Now, if you want that same desktop transition that I showed you, make sure you take the use as a wallpaper option. Once you do that, you'll get the cool animation. And in case you don't want your wallpaper to be the same as your screensaver, don't tick that and you're still all good. The next big change happens at your desktop. You now have widgets directly on your desktop. Now look, you've already had widgets on the sidebar for the notification panel, but now you can take those widgets and just drag them straight to your desktop anywhere you please and have them in any capacity. Better yet, if you wanna add some fresh widgets, simply hit the edit widget option at the bottom and now you'll get a clean UI that shows you all the possible widgets that you can use for the various apps you have. You can even enable iPhone widgets, the ones that are on your phone, and have them directly placed on your desktop here. A lot of options. If you don't want the iPhone widgets, by the way, you can also turn that off by going into the settings. And it's also worth noting that there are no restrictions on where you can place these widgets, technically speaking. So if you're feeling chaotic evil, go right ahead and put a widget in the dead smack middle of your dead stop. This third feature I'm only mentioning because it's an outright nuisance and enabled by default. So if you accidentally or perhaps intentionally click on your desktop anywhere, you'll notice all the windows you have open just kind of disperse into the corners and you get a clean view of your desktop. While there are certain practical applications, I'm willing to bet the vast majority of you want to get rid of this feature. The good news is that you can. Simply again, go to your friendly settings app. From there, you're gonna find the desktop and dock settings and there is a option that says show items items over this says reveal desktop simply change this from always to just only in stage manager and there you go today's video is sponsored by macpaw this is clean my mac a all-in-one utilitarian and maintenance hub for your mac devices so if you are looking to free up unwanted space that might be taken up due to old large files junk on your system or maybe even mail attachments you can have all that scanned instantly and removed straight from clean my mac better yet it can speed up your system by checking for memory processes and then freeing up your overall ram hard drive and even repairing bad hard drive sectors to further optimize Optimized your system. It has built in protection in the form of malware removal so it can scan for malicious and harmful programs and instantly remove them. Optimize your privacy settings. And the best part is that it has a built in uninstaller so you can see all the programs that are on your Mac right now and then actually remove them directly from here. You can even update them. You also have advanced functions like Space Lens, which gives you analytics on what's taking how much space, and also Shredder, which can securely and permanently delete files that you don't want anyone having access to ever. All this and so much more can be done with Clean My Mac. And the best part, if you want all of it taken care of, you just hit the Smart Scan button and it does all of that at a glance. Now, if you want to learn more about this program, I will leave a link in the video description below so you can check it out for yourself. Let's move over to Safari. There are a ton of changes to talk about here. First and foremost, you now have profiles. It's kind of like having a focus mode explicitly for your web browser. So under Safari, you will notice you have the ability to now select between a personal profile and any other profile you create. So in my case, I have a productivity profile. And you notice the key difference is that, for example, my bookmarks change. In some cases, you can even change what web browser is being used, the URL, what behavior occurs when a tab starts, and all of this 
can be simply done by clicking on the Safari button once you open up Safari, going on the option to create a profile or manage one if you already have a few from the get-go. And then from here, you can create a brand new profile. You select the icon, the color, as well as a name for the profile, and then you choose what bookmarks you want. You can have different type of bookmarks if you have folders and settings like that. And then once you do that, you get some additional options again, like tab behavior, new windows behavior. And once you've set all that, there you go. And switching profiles is really easy. You simply have a Dropbox, just select the profile you want. And just like that, it's all done. Now, while some people might not really see the benefit of this, if you do have multiple workflows and use the same web browser on the same machine, there's definitely a lot of utility over here. You now have the ability to lock tabs and windows when using Safari in private mode to protect all your content from prying eyes. To do this, you simply go on to the Windows selection. From there, you choose the option Lock All Private Windows. And there you go. You now require a passcode or Touch ID to enable the content and view it again. This is really helpful if you have a lot of confidential information. To enable this, all you have to do is simply go to Safari Settings. From there, you're going to go to the Privacy tab and you're going to tick the option that says require password to see private windows and you're all set. You also now have the ability to turn any website into its own dedicated standalone application or at least give the illusion of doing so. So for example, go to any website on Safari. If you want to create a shortcut for it, go to the files tab and simply select the add to doc option. Once you do that, you will be prompted to rename it if you want to and it will be assigned the logo automatically or you can select a custom one once that's all done, you'll notice you now actually have a application looking type icon on your dock. When you click on it, it opens the website as a standalone application, meaning you don't have the navigational settings you would with traditional Safari. It just looks like its own little thing. Now, this can be very useful for people who like having apps in isolated instances, maybe because they don't want someone else using Safari when they're on an app or for their own productivity reasons. Whatever the case is, it is worth noting that if you want to get rid of a web app, now you basically have to delete it like you would any other traditional app on macOS which means going to Launchpad or Finder and dumping it into the trash bin rather than just removing it from your dock. There have been some additions to the webcam functionality. For example, when you're using FaceTime and you go into the menu bar settings, you will notice you have reactions now, just like you do on iMessage. You have all these cool effects. It's a nice little touch. You also have the ability to recenter yourself and make yourself at the center of the frame if you're using your iPhone's camera or MacBook's own camera. And you will notice it definitely is a very effective implementation of it. Furthermore, when you are screen sharing, you'll also notice that if you're on live video, you have a layover option, which allows you to make yourself either a puny circle at the corner and bottom of the screen or a outright giant with the presentation behind you. Both of them have a lot of utility and it's a great feature to add. For the 1% of you who are actually gaming on macOS, you have my sympathy. But all jokes aside guys, the cool thing here is that when you are playing a game and you actually switch to full screen mode, by default it enables something called game mode. This basically prioritizes all the system resources macOS has to optimize the game and make sure it's running at its peak performance. Now of course it is worth noting if you don't want this or you want to disable this, you can totally do that. Simply just shrink the window, go over to the menu bar, select the controller icon and then you can just turn off game mode or enable it as well. It's a nifty touch. I haven't personally tested it enough to give you a definitive answer if it actually makes any real world difference. But if you guys are interested in this, I can definitely do some extensive testing and make a video on that at another time. So let me know about that. There are so many other cool features that I didn't really focus on on this video as you can only squeeze in so much content. But with that said, of course, hopefully I covered all the big ones. Some other notable things include the ability to now do markup directly in the notes app for PDF files. You also also have supposedly faster and more accurate search results when using Safari and you also have other cool additions in the messages app like better search features and again so many other cool features. If you want to learn more about them or you're interested I can definitely look into it and make a more detailed video but hopefully I covered a feature or two that you will find useful and might be able to implement in your own personal workflow. Thank you so much for watching. As always if you enjoyed the content make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. It genuinely helps me grow and allows me to make more quality content for you awesome people. Catch you in the next one.